Hi guys, I'm just going to do a series of short videos uh, in regards to the uh, mock of the Venator class. It's a Lepin set, 05077. For some reason they put a sticker on there that from Galito Toys, I have no idea. Um, the, uh, the overall shipment came in pretty quick, to be honest, from the time I ordered it to the time I got it in the door with a little bit of a DHL problem. Um, took six days, so I was pretty impressed with that. Um, the box it comes in kind of looks like this. It's uh, just a standard box taped up pretty well, so I guess if it gets rained on, it's not going to get soaked through. And it's just pretty much that's it. You know, a ton of ton of bricks in there and no real rhyme or reason to putting them in there. Um, I did make one little thing I would note is that when you're sorting out your bags, is make a little list so because all those bags there's about 150 bags total and they filled up this entire table um, with no no space to build whatsoever so I just put like the bag number and the number of bags per step um, and then you can put them back in your box get them out of the way and you know that when it's time to get that step you can grab the bags that you need that is pretty convenient um, some of this in this introduction is going to be a little redundant um, well, actually, later steps will be because you'll probably watch this first if you're watching this. Um, because I decided to do this after I did step one. Um, the bags kind of have like little numbered sequences in there. So you've got like four and then it says dash 32 there. So that means that out of those that bag, there's probably 32 bags worth of that step. I don't know why there's a random there. But so that's why I did this page. So like on this one... If we can get this focus is in there, it's like step four is from bags 32 to 42. So you know that you'll have all the bags that you need for whatever step you're going to do. Um, overall, with the, the, the person I bought it from, I just bought it from the guy that sold the most and um, got the best reviews. And they were been very helpful. I've had to you know, contact them over line and they're very quick to respond and get the shipment out. I did order a Falcon also at the same time, which I have not received yet. I don't know if it's because of um, they shipped it later or not. So that might be a little bit of an unresolved issue. Anyway, the, what I'm going to do is try to make these short and sweet. Um, I'm just going to give you like what, what things look like at the beginning of a step this, in what, uh, in the, um, before the build, and then I'm going to build it, and then I'll show you what's afterwards, and I'll make any comments about like the build process. That's pretty much it. The only other thing, too, is some of the bags are torn when I, when I got it. Um, and hopefully there aren't missing pieces, and the instructions came kind of beat up. Um, that's pretty much the only gripes that I have, and the sticker there folded over, so now there's that wrinkle in it, um, but I don't know if I'm going to really use it anyway. It says star plan, and it is what it is. So um, that's about it, and then one last comment is that you'll notice on the cover here that you've got the parts filled in, but on the last page... It is not, and that's one of the controversial things with the set is why is that not there. There's also supposedly, if you can see the gaps in there, uh, I'm probably going to do in the steps to figure out how to fix that, but the way they built it, that should be probably laying flat, and there's a couple other issues. Anyway, hopefully these will provide some um, help to you guys. I was looking, the reason for doing this is that I was looking to see what was going on. I was a little hesitant in buying a Lepin set. Um, I, I have friends that if they found out I bought one, I'd be ostracized, ostracized. You kids can look that one up on Google, um, but from them. So, um, but since Lego technically does not make a Venator, um, I decided that was okay. And I, as far as the UCS Falcon that I bought from them, when I can actually buy a Falcon, I will from Lego. And then the one that I bought from Lepin, I'm going to do a custom mock of a, uh, a UCS Outrider. Anyway, take care. Okay, so I finished step one. And that's kind of the build. I'm trying to get that into the phone there. Um, overall, it's pretty good, pretty solid. Um, no real problems going in with the build. Um, it offers a, um, the overall size of it, I think, was around 33 and a half inches long. Uh, and the back area here is uh, about 20 and a half inches long. And then this middle section here is about 14. I wish I could shrink this a little bit more, but I can't really fit it in. So hopefully that top one kind of shows you. And it kind of shows you how big that how big it is it's it's about um <laughs> like three feet with those engines it's probably going to be over three feet long um just a couple points of note 
it's a pretty solid build. Um, you can shake it around a little bit and it doesn't come apart. The only thing is, is I think Lego probably would have had you put something here to kind of keep these together because these will fall apart, you know, come off. But I'm sure in the, maybe the next step, it probably takes care of. Another little bit of weirdness was this little one by eight axle that they put in here. They don't have you with the rings and they have you put it in early in the first step. I don't know why, because every time you build this thing, they fall out. So I got annoyed with that and I just grabbed a couple little retainer rings and now it stays in there. Um, otherwise you could probably just note mark it with something and set it aside. Um, also the magnets are super powerful. I probably wouldn't put them near anything that could be affected by a magnet. Um, and they also come in this like little bag here um like it's like paper rape you know wrapped taped thing it was hidden wrapped inside a couple other bags that they had taped up um at first i thought i didn't have them um and the only i guess the only last real little bit about this is that right there are the four pieces that i had left over that's it now uh, another note about the little pins there is that they are very they're kind of inconsistent most of them fit in there pretty well but i would say a good third maybe a little more of them really needed to take in some you know strength to put them in there or if you enjoy pain you can push keep pushing them in there with your thumb for me i just put them on the end of the table and press down and that got them in and that was both for the blue and the black ones the other thing too is in the instructions the blue ones kind of look like a, a some sort of shade of gray that might be me because i'm i'm, a, I'm kind of an older fart and um maybe it's an, a vision thing but i didn't really have any, anything any other issues with it and finally last little bit is that these little hinges like here that look like that they actually come in as two separate pieces whereas in a lego set would it would be one piece all together those are really painful to put together too by your thumb um so what i just did is i just put them together like this put a little space and took a two by four plate and pressed down and that worked great so that's about it So I finished step two. It took me about three and a half hours. And um, just a couple of little building points. So that's pretty much the details. If you'll notice that these things, some of these are on angle. These guys right here. Um, the only reason why I did that is because in the instructions, they have them going into the, um, the little brackets in here. But they don't sit right and they kind of pull off and they fall off pretty easily. Um, the Lepin parts on these small ones don't seem to cling as well as the Lego versions, but well enough if you don't mess with it. Um, behind here, it's kind of hard to see behind these two parts right here. There's a, uh, they didn't do a very good job with that one. Um, they're like hanging there and they keep falling off. So I'm going to go back in there and put in a couple one by ones plate of something just to stabilize it a little bit more. Um, otherwise it keeps falling off, but that's pretty much step two is just this little area right here on both sides. I don't need to show it to you on both sides. Um, and then finally, one other note of point is I made a couple of, um, uh, blocks just to kind of set it up because if you keep setting it down on the sides, they pull off, uh, you know, they, they, they're resting on those things and they don't stay there. So, you know, like I think on a Lego, they probably would have doubled up on that and you would have had a little more uh, clutch power to hold those in place. But other than that, everything was there. Um, I didn't miss any pieces. The only other little note is over here, we got these guys. I have no idea why they were in bag number two. You don't use them for anything. Um, I've never seen the instructions. I went through it. Maybe I missed something. I don't know. So I'm just going to set them aside, assuming that they're needed for something else later. So technically, all you really have as far as extra parts are those guys right there for step two. Again, nothing was missing. That's the final instruction page. Um, and I think that's about it. All right, so step three is done. A um, couple points. It's a little bit of a repetitive step. Um, you're basically doing this little section 12 times. Uh, the other part is I have a newfound respect for these guys at Lego that put those together because you have to do 48 of them and it does take its toll. Um, other than that, it's really not much to the step. You're building that. And then also this little back thing. I made a mistake and I, instead of the one by the one by 14s, I put one 16s. So just kind of note that, that it's the two one by 14s. The other moat that I made earlier 
is that this bit on, under here, this lower part, wasn't there before. You actually do build it as a last step of, page, of step three, last pages of step three. So this is where you're building it, page 48. The only reason why it's a bit of a note is that you actually see it in the instructions for the first time on page 21. And you actually see it, if I can get to it, as it looks like, you know, this is step one, and you see it there where you would think that that would be built in step one. But it is not, so don't worry about it if you come across, if you're watching these before building. Um, it's really nothing to note. I built it in about two hours, two hours and 15 minutes or so. And as far as extra pieces, there you go. I don't know where the little nipple thing or the rounded part for this guy is, but that's it. So nothing too, nothing really extraordinary or anything like that. Oh, the only other bit too, and this is from step two earlier, is just note that um, instead of having the standard where you're putting the pins in, the, in this area, you're actually putting them in the holes for that. If you put them in the pin, this section as you add it, this, this guy right here, will not fit. So make sure you put this in the right place. All right, that's it. Okay, so step four is done, and that's pretty much the sub-assembly right there. I think I at the beginning of the step four, I said it was the top part. It's actually the bottom. Um, unlike a traditional Lego thing that I thought was a little bit different, is that this guy doesn't actually attach. He just rests on there on the bottom of it. Um, I would have thought that they might have had something to do with that, but as with other Lego or weapons issues with this, I guess not. So, um, but I did look ahead in step five and it looks like the first few steps addresses that little bit of a problem. Couple issues. Um, one, on step 13, it's showing you to get this two by three sloped brick. It's actually a three by three sloped brick looking like that. So don't spend too much time uh, looking for it. Um, also on page 57, so they have four pins here and they show you putting them on the outside. I actually grabbed the extra pins from a previous step and put them in the middle there just to kind of give a little extra strength. And sure enough, at the end of step four, these are the extra pieces so you get your pins back. So, and it makes it just a little bit stronger. Um, that's it really. Um, the total build time on this guy was maybe, well, I don't know, maybe about two hours, 45 minutes, somewhere in there. A little bit of weirdness with this step. Um, one, these guys right here, getting those in there kind of requires you to remove these plates to press them in there. At first I wasn't going to put them in, I was going to try to design some sort of thing structure to put it underneath the plate, but I figured the weight would might snap the pin, so I just decided to go with the way they did it. I just kind of wanted to be able to lift it off the stand to show people. But then again, another thing too with that is um, there'd be no really great place to grab it. Um, it does, you know, finally connect down there. That's the only place that right now it, it's connecting is right in here. So, and then the rest is just kind of hanging there. So later in this step, so I'm sure something will be addressed with that. And that's pretty much it for step five. Now, one other thing too is you got these these little guys right here for the the base stand. They 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 go right here. So you'll notice that there's some whiteness along in here. I uh, had the Elmer's glue them. Um, I refuse to use Craggle, but I might actually do that um, just to get these done. Um, the reason why is at least these kind of hold it in there and you can pull them apart at some future date if I wanted to. But not one of these had any clutching power whatsoever. So if you were to take it over and do that, they'd fall right off. So that's why I kind of Elmer glued them there. So you can kind of see the glue right there. It's kind of drying. So I'll wait for it to dry to put it in there. Um, last final bit is that the uh, total build time on this one was maybe about... Uh, three hours, 15 minutes, somewhere in there. Um, the other thing too is those are your little pieces that are left over. I'm going to start using these guys since you have enough of them now to um, add one in here to keep that because there's only two holding that piece together and I think it needs one more because it keeps coming off one or two more. 
So I'll do it on that side too. Something you may want to give it some thought. Anyway, that's it. Step six will be coming up. And um, it was actually kind of a fun build. It was kind of, uh, you know, the little plate on the bottom there is kind of interesting. Anyway, all the way they do that. Okay, that's it. Step six is done, which basically marks the halfway point of the build. Um, took me about two and a half hours or so to do. Um, it's pretty straightforward. A couple little points to note is that this is not really secured very well. Um, they could have done a better job maybe if they added a couple of these guys towards the end. Sorry about that if it's a lot of focus. So where, you know, they use because that's how they attach it at various points in the build is like right here or is right here and um, right here so when you see those guys that's where they attach it they could have used a couple down there I think to keep those close together the other um, really kind of strange bit is I changed this a little bit um, it's you know I'll show you the instructions the nose of it because it comes it's holds so much better than their build um, what they did is they have you know, the, the, this, you know, on the base plate there, followed by that brick, followed by that little, the, the angle plate. And what I did was, is I basically removed the, these two guys and I just put the, I just put the, if I can get it in there, if you can see it. I just put those right there. It holds much better. It's slightly cosmetically different, but, um, I like the look of it a little bit better. Also, I changed the back of it to this one piece right here is I changed it with to a two by two and then the, the two by two angle um, corner plates. Um, the only difference is the reason why I did that is that it, these parts right here were kept falling off because they were not very secure. Um, and cosmetically, it fits. I think it actually fits better than than the the original one. It's much tighter. Um, that's pretty much it with that. So feel free to do that. You don't you don't really need to do theirs because when you build it, if your pieces are like that, it's not going to hold. Um, as for extra pieces, that's pretty much it. But since I didn't use these, you got those too. So you're swapping these three pieces out for basically these three pieces right there. Couple of issues is like one you get these guys right here right but if you notice they fall right out so half of the ones that I had to use fall out so I replaced them with official Lego ones which is much better you need these to be good because they're what holds it's what holds some of these parts together and as you can see there's only a couple pins that holds the whole structure together even on a completed engine um, and I left this kind of undone the only parts that are really kind of holding it to the frame itself is this, this, and there. Because if you see, you put this on there like this, and sorry for the, you know, the camera work. I know the production quality is so-so on these videos, but anyway, it is what it is. And then the engine attaches like that. And hopefully, and as I said, something just fell off. Hopefully in a later step, and I think I did some looking ahead, I think in a later step, they're going to give you something to assemble. I wish they did it now, where you're going to build it here and stick a pin in there to kind of hold it together. So right now, I have the engine on, and it does say, but as I said, things fall off all the time, because th that part that I just showed you is right here, and there's only a few pins to kind of hold it together. The, another little aspect, too, is just so you know, um, it took me a little while to put this to, to figure this out, but to get those to line up correctly, you're actually going to be sticking the. It's not um, like a traditional. It's you're putting. Hold on, I'm trying to do this so I can. Uh, sorry about that. Um, one of the, one of the this pin right here uh, on the plate actually goes into there, and that's how you line it up. Um, another part too that they had is that. Another part is you have this right here, you know, on four of them. And this, the only thing that's holding this on is, I'm sorry, let me show you that again. The only thing that's holding this on is this little corn, this little part right here into this pin. So on four of them, that's why I put in, um, I added um, this, this brick here and these here. 
Um, this is another one of those ones where there's really nothing holding it on. So you're going to need to find, um, however you want to decorate your engine. I actually kind of like it after the way I did it. Um, but you, you're going to want to put something there to hold, to hold this piece on into this area right here. Because it just doesn't stay. Um, so find, I think you're going to need at least, if, you're, if you want to be consistent, you're going to need, need at least 16 of something to put one on each, each, each of these frames. That's what I kind of did. Um, where you see the tan one is actually the ones where there's nothing holding it on because I wanted two pieces there. So decide what you want to do. Whatever you feel is cosmetically pleasing to your eye, do it. But as I said, you're going to need to do it. So anyway, um, that's really about it. And I, I said, I highly recommend getting the Lego versions of this because these are actually holding these together. Um, and you need every little bit that you can find to keep these engines together. Um, what I'm probably going to do is cut to another, you know, I'm going to put all this stuff together and show you what it looks like in a second. Um, as far as, and those are the pieces that I got together, you know, to, to decorate, to strengthen that build. Um, and then these are the pieces that were left over. Everything else was there. Um, I believe one last little issue, mm -hmm. and I believe this was part of this step, is this is crap. Um, you got this whole heavy thing there, and it doesn't stay together very well. So um, it's only held on by this little uh, couple pins right here. That's pretty much it. Um, so what I'm probably going to do is replace this this two by I think it's a 10, 14, whatever it is. Um, I'm going to replace with the because since you have two extras of the the ones, the, uh, this one right here. I'm going to replace those with those, and then you can put another row, of, a couple pins up here and make it a stronger build. Providing that, for some reason, they don't do something later in the steps to make it a better build. Um, I think I saw something earlier where you're going to build a structure that's kind of, kind of hold it in place, but I kind of like things to have a nice clutch to it and holding it on its own without having to rely on something just to be an obstacle so it doesn't fall off. Anyway, that's it for this step. Um, sorry about it being a little bit longer than the other ones. It is a fragile build. Um, I think my overall time on this was two and a half hours, and I would say about a good probably 20 minutes or so were trying to figure out how to make this a better build, finding the pieces that I needed to do it. So those, those are the engine mounted in there. Um, you notice the blue box underneath it? Because they won't stay up um, after a while. Um, it's just because it's just those three little areas that are technically putting it together, even though you're pressing this onto there. There's going to be one of these that are different than the rest of them, and that's how you line that up. So, uh, step nine is now done. It's basically just putting these engines on. Um, pretty quick step. I think it only took me uh, just under two hours to do everything. Um, and another five or ten minutes trying to find additional parts to, you know, strengthen this up. Because like with the bigger engines, this is the same kind of thing where just the little end parts fall off before. So I just strengthened it up a little bit with those. Um, these are actually a little bit more sturdy than the than the big ones. Um, you can notice that one of the, I'm still missing one of the, or I did missing, but I took off one of the big ones. I'm still having an issue keeping it up with this this piece so I've kind of redesigned it a little bit so that instead of just having it a one overlap there's now a three overlap I'm hoping that'll uh, enhance it a little bit too they also in, in step nine gave you this uh, a little axle to put in there to hold it up it helps a little bit but not great um, I'm thinking unfortunately that I'm going to have to rebuild the bottom so you can give it some support from underneath which means probably inverting um, sorry for the, the moving out of focus, probably going to invert this brick and then build it. So it's facing the plate down there. Um, and that would be pretty easy to do. So, um, but I'm going to see how the hole works just to, oops, sorry about the fingers there, that the hole works just to see if it doesn't get in the way there. Other than that, um, the, those are my extra pieces from this step. Everything was there. Um, it, it went better than step eight, but again, it's the engines are still, I guess it is a mock and I should be a little more tolerant, but um, they are a little bit flimsy. And I think when I'm all said and done, I'm probably going to just strip them down 
and rebuild them myself just to make them better. So I finished the step, nothing really too much to report. It's pretty straightforward build, it's just a bunch of bricks. Um, only a couple notes is like where you see this, I kind of moved these around to make it a stronger build, more solid. Um, I don't like the idea of a uh, one by two dangling off the edge there, even though you have something else. It's just stronger if you put it in here somewhere and move the bricks around a little bit. Take it if you want, otherwise build it as instructions. The only other thing that I noticed while building was here on step 21, the section that you build prior to it right here, you have to tilt down before putting this plate on. You'd probably realize that anyway, but if not, you cannot tilt it down. Um, other than that, it was pretty straightforward. Took about um, uh, an hour and a half, just about. And everything seemed to be okay. Um, only leftover pieces were right there. So step 10 is done. It's basically the conning tower. Um, pretty straightforward build. A couple little things that I did is I just staggered the bricks where they stacked them. I just like a stronger build. Um, two modifications that I made were right in there. You can see it on the right hand side there if it would focus, but it's not going to. This phone sucks. Anyway, um, I put in two one by two plates right here. Um, and the only re the reason I did that is that if you don't, this guy spins around. It just kind of annoyed me. Um, the other thing that they did, which was I thought was kind of strange, is on this part right here, they put in um, a 1x4 axle. I had extra pins, so I, I decided to go with putting pins in instead. It's a pretty easy modification. Other than that, that's it. Um, it the whole thing took me about th eh, three hours just about to build. So step 11 is done, but I need to show you a couple little things um, so it's not assembled, and then I'll finish that up later. On page 53, that you're going to make two of these things. You need to modify it a little bit. You're going to push this one on the one in one spacer in, and this side another spacer in, so there's only one between. That is because nowhere in the instructions does it ever say where to when or where to fasten it. But this is where you're going to fasten it to the... Um, at least not that I found anyway, to the uh, stand. Um, the blue side is one not, one hole higher than the black side, and the blue side is two is the third hole from the lowest. I don't know if you can see it there. Sorry. There, see these red structures? You'll see those instructions. There's that lowest one. There's actually two spaces between that and where you're putting that blue pin and three on this side. Um, the blue pin is because it, I don't have, I only had two extra of these from the Leppin set and I needed two more of these to put it in. And you need the long ones because they don't press up against each other so you're actually going to have a, get, this is going to stick in the structure, you're going to have the gap and then these pin, this bit will attach to this. Alright, so I'm going to put this together real quick and then I'll show it to you what it looks like, even though you kind of saw it already. All right. Okay, so I've got those braces in. This this part is on really nice and tight. It's not moving anywhere. Um, again, I think I showed this to you earlier, but the blue one is one higher than that one. It's just where it worked out for me, where nothing was bending or anything like that. Um, and it's just on, it's the, on the opposite side. It's the same. Moving on. Second part is the big changes are with these plates. I don't know how to show this to you, so I'm just going to kind of give you a look at the back there. Where you see these bricks and that magnet. That's where I placed it. I also added this plate here. Um, some of the plates are um, a little bit different. I think I added that one too or I moved it around. Um, this is basically just some gray pieces there. It looks like it, uh, that, I think it's the 1x12 or whatever it is, that long one. Uh, four, a 1x4, 1x4, and a 1x3. Um, that is just to kind of, you're going to have a gap underneath here and I'll show it to you later and that fills that in a little bit better. I also added two one, two by four plates right here. I don't know if you can see those plates there but you can kind of position it there um, on there. So this is, comes in focus and then these I believe are the same. I did not adjust those at all. 
Um, so what I will do now is, and then I'll show it on the other side there. It's just a mirror image, but hopefully just showing this to you. You can pause the video, kind of figure out where it goes by some reference points maybe, hopefully. So there you go. These added, added, added this plate right here. Um, I did not need any crackle for this, but these magnets are super strong. So I felt that it was easier to start from the front here, connect those magnets and work my way back. All right, I'll attach it and show you what it looks like. Okay, so here's the final build of step 11, or final video for step 11. Total build time was about probably close to four hours, maybe a little bit more just because of all the futzing that I had to do with it that you've seen in the other videos. Just wanted to show you real quick how those magnets attach. One note is make sure that you this guy is free, that doesn't bump up into this. I had to adjust it over, um, but that shouldn't be a problem. But that is a problem. You know, if it can't lift up, then it will not attach correctly. There's the other modified part right there, fitting all nice and tight. Then coming back a little bit more, and this is kind of the, the way and the order I attached them, is this guy right here with that plate. There's nothing underneath it. And there's that structure right there that you put in. Oh, by the way, it connects. You can see it's two holes down. I don't know what the, in the instructions, you can't really see what they do with that. Final bit, I don't think I noted it last time, but if you see down there, see that little white plate there that's connecting to the, the two by four, two brick? That is a spinner, you know, like theirs, but the Leppin spinners suck. I mean, they're just the worst. So that's actually a Lego spinner. And you're going to need those, you know, spinner plates because they just won't um, stick. If they won't hold, if it's the Lepin one, at least not any of mine. Um, that's something they can definitely. The the two things with this set is those Lepin spinners are the worst, and these guys right here do not. You know, these little parts like this don't stay. Um, I've mentioned that before. So that's really about it. The other thing too is when you're attaching the bottom plates, make sure you have this tilted up. If it's tilted down, it's enough to prevent the plate to coming up a little bit. Um, but I think it came out pretty well. Um, and finally, and then over there is that, that's that section with the, um, um, just to fill in that gap there. Um, and I think I said that was a one by 12 on the bottom. It's a one by 10. And I think that's about it. Oh, one other little thing. I always keep adding things. Um, right here, you're going to notice it, but I'll talk about more in the other step, the next step 12, is I added this, um, looks like it's a 1x10 plate with two 1x2s on top of it. That's what I had. That's going to fill in a gap that is there, just driving me crazy. Um, sorry, I'm going to try to, you know, I'm going to have to move around just to see this a little bit better. Um, because underneath it also, you're going to see it right here as soon as I can focus it. Um, Come on, focus up. Right here, I added the basically the same thing. It just attaches. So it fills it in a little bit. Um, the the When I originally built it, there were, these gaps were huge. It's a little bit better with those plates that I did. You know, the way I placed the strut, you know, the magnets and stuff, it's a little bit tighter. Um, when the other plate is on there, though the, the, the upper hole is on, then it gets dark and you don't really notice it as much as you do now. I may at one day just go out and buy some more dark gray plates somewhere and, and then fill that in a little bit. But right now it's not bothering me too much because the rest of it, there used to be gaps all along in here. Um, there really isn't. I'm pretty happy with that, with that placement now and it's pretty sturdy. It, nothing's coming off or anything when you shake it a little bit. So hopefully that helps. It's not too confusing. Again, sorry for the fuzziness. My total build time with all the little parts and stuff, it's all a bit, I'll show you why in a second, was about nine and a half hours. And a lot of it was maybe about good four hours, maybe a little more, was futzing around to get it to where I liked it better. If you want to build it yourself as per the instructions and put it together, it's probably three and a half hours or so, maybe four at tops. Um, but I made a lot of little adjustments. I hated the gaps and it not laying right. Um, but I'm going to break this down into a couple of videos, hopefully, um, just to keep it short and not as awful. Um, originally, they give you the assembly like this, where the smaller is on top of the bigger 
plate there. But on mine, I, I inverted it. And the reason why I inverted that is if you put this guy here and this guy here on top of it, that is looks more like it does on the cover of your instruction book. The other thing that's really nice about it is you can take a one by one brick with with I forget uh, with a side stud I forget what they call that um, and then put that underneath here. Hopefully I can do that without causing too much damage. I'll explain these little support things here in a little later, and then you can press this together and you get a nice clamping uh, or clutching. Whereas if you don't have it, they pop off. You know, they, they kind of look like that a little bit because there's nothing holding them there. Just a nice little feature that, that, you know, and I like the build better. Then I take a one by two of whatever you want. I just had these lying around. Put it on the bottom and you can get it a little more. Uh, you can get a little, it'll be a little bit stronger build. Um, you know, holding that, it, holding that, that stud in there or that one by one brick. And it's just a nice solid look. I just like it so much better. Up to you. Uh, another couple little things in the instructions when you're building the conning tower, they have this one, this dark gray, actually one stud over. So they have the one by one, the one by four dark gray, and then the one by two right here, which makes this entire structure nothing supporting it together. So I switched that around a little bit so this isn't doesn't keep coming apart because there's really you know you want to stagger um, your bricks to make a more solid build. And with this, you're going from here to here without any structure, so it breaks apart real easy. So make that adjustment. I think this is the only place I've had to put one of these where I haven't had to glue them. And even then, they're kind of wobbling. Um, that's another little thing. Finally, um, as far as the rest of this little video goes, because the other ones are going to be a little more in-depth structure views, are the guns. This right here is pretty much built as per the instructions. But I added, like, you can put whatever you want, but just make sure it's a tile, a 1 by 2 tile right there. And then put this on as per instructions. And then what I did also was, I think in the instructions they had a one by two uh, plate there, and then you stuck these underneath it. I actually took the one by two with the center stud and put it in the hole there. And then if you take this assembly and put it on as such, sorry, I'll show it to you a little bit better in a second then your guns don't move around. These things will flop back and forth and actually come out if you don't make those adjustments, if you build it like they do. And then it's just a little more solid, and then you can kind of adjust them however you want. And put it on, and there you go. You got a nice gun that they all look the same without the little sides flopping around. If you like the sides flopping around, leave it. But I just found that just to work a little bit better, and they, they don't come out. Um, I think that's it. Oh, one last little bit, cosmetic detail is on these, they build theirs without this one by two here, the one by one and the one by two plates there. So these edge ones are actually across that top. And then that makes it so that there's a little gap there, they don't sit in there. If you were to flip this around or you tap it from the bottom, it'll pop out. If you add those plates that I just showed you, the one by two uh, plate, the one by one red, the one by two light gray, and then put this on. It's really tight, but it will fit in there. The other nice thing is it compresses this so you don't see the little gaps between the, the, the plates in there. And it holds it in there really tight. Um, I, I got that idea because I looked at the picture on the cover of the book. And he actually, the designer had those in there also. Um, and it also makes it more equal. I think with this one, it was all gray. So you may want to do that. But once it's in there, you can get it out. But it's nice and tight in there. Um, so make that adjustment also. Um, my next segment of the video is going to be talking about the understructure because I had to make a lot of changes to that because on the, my original video, I put it together like they did and you had a whole bunch of gaps in there. I wasn't happy. So here we are with the second video of step 12 showing the changes on the underside of the, the top hull. Um, have your instructions there, but this is basically, I'm using pages uh, 195 and 194 to kind of refer to for the original, so you can kind of see the differences. Um, so starting from the back, the only real changes I made here were these two inch plates right here. I moved them up a little bit. I think they're down, um, they're down closer to here. Um, on theirs, they're right there. The only reason why I moved them up a little bit is that it made this more even here. Without it, it was bending 
it was kind of curving back and up, up and down. Um, I adjusted this plate right here to cover basically both of those. So it's centered on this little split right here. So um, it adds a little more stability to it, at least I felt so, and gave, gives that a little more to grip onto. Um, so that's just that. Um, moving along, I think it's pretty much the same until you get to the this magnet right here. I did adjust it. Theirs looks like that. It's Mine is um, a little bit further to the right, I believe, maybe one stud or two studs more. Um, where and I you know added this little plate right here the plate then you'll notice that they have dark plates near theirs I don't have that because I adjusted mine a little bit my plate is just basically that one long two four six eight so it looks like it's a two by sixteen with yeah of course because the plates on top are one by eights so it's with just the two one by eights they have theirs the, the 2x16 plus a 2x3 with three 1x8 plates on top. Um, I get this lay right and you really don't need it. I like mine better. And then I just kind of placed it right here. So a little interactive building, which means fuzziness. Um, and then you'll notice that little change there from there. So there's mine. It's still, it, it still is positioned like it starts where it is, but mine ends. Um, you don't really need that. So what else looks different? Um, so they have they have this this the, these this square this plate here and that one right there. I do not. I took them off. Didn't need it. Mine actually now looks like that. I needed those plates elsewhere. I moved the square to here because it helps it um, it secures a little bit more. And this one was bumping into something on the structure that kept the, 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 the hull from laying level. Um, this, I believe, is still the same. And everything else is in here. I'm just kind of double checking as I move along. This is still the same. Okay, so the only other difference now is the front magnet, I believe. And this is basically, this is where I use that other 4x4 plate and I put the magnet in the middle. You, I did adjust my magnets are actually one stud in closer, you know, towards this side than theirs is. Um, because if you don't, I had a big gap. Maybe I did something wrong, but I double checked it. Theirs is, theirs are right here on the edge, so I moved that in a little bit more. Um, I just like the way it lays, and I'll show it to you when I'm done with that. Continuing on with step 12, next video couple of things to go over with this one also. So if you notice, it's going to be really hard to see me. That's the best one. Um, that, that, that's how they build their, their little side piece that kind of goes right here. I had to modify that. So I don't know if you can kind of see them both in there. You got to, I can't, this part blocks the plate, the top hole from laying flat. And they also, when the, when the way I position it, it won't fit into this section right here. So I modified it a little bit to take this, you know, I moved this, the, the, the height on this is what blocks it, the height on that blocks it. Also, the top part of this keeps the plate from laying flat. So that's, it. I'll hold that there for a second or two so you can kind of see that little difference. Maybe move it over here so you can see it a little darker. There we go. Um, the other thing I did here is I also added a couple extra blue ones to hold the blue studs there to hold it in better. Um, for I also did it on the back one too, right there, so you can see where I position those. That's for these two plates right here. I didn't change anything on this. The only thing is I didn't really understand or I couldn't see, tell specifically how they did this. So I lined those studs up on basically right on the center. I couldn't tell it, one, if it was on the center on the, or on the, the between those two rows. So um, I like it the way it looks after it's centered um, and it makes blocking it. But I didn't change, modify anything on that. Um, as far as the hole goes, um, if you'll notice, let me get over here to this instruction page. Um, page back to page 95. Um, so you'll notice this plate right here. 
that blocks the hole from laying flat on the door also. You know, that's basically right here. So I remove that. But if you remove it, it kind of weakens the structure right here. This guy kind of lays flat. So on the top is I moved it. I, I played with these little bits right here. Put the two, there's a one by, th one by three and a one by three on the top there, which I removed. I think it was a one by seven or something, or the one by four. And um, I moved this, originally this is in that position right there. So I moved that over by one, and, that, and then I put in a one by three there, and then that gives it a nice solid feel to it. And on the bottom, there's that one by six and a one by one, which I believe was where I got those there. So you can do that if you want to. Um, again, I it's just something I had to do to get it to lay without those gaps in it. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I need to point out. Oh, these magnets. So you're going to want to make those. There's You can kind of tell. It wants to, they're so powerful that they want to cling to each other. So they tended to pull a little bit. So when you put this on, it's up to you, but I'm going to orient it so that there's kind of a repulsion between the two as opposed to pulling them together. The magnets want to push each other away. Um, and you just have to rotate it. So where it, see, see how it kind of spins there? That means it's being repulsed. So I'm just going to use that little marker knowing that's on top. You can do that if you want. Um, I just want to do that because it won't pull this magnet up. I mean, they're just so strong and those are so close to each other that um, um, I'm just going to do that. I don't know if it's going to matter too much. All right, so the next video will be with the plates on, uh, the whole sections on, and that should be it. And then final notes. Um, oh, again, I always forget something. I thought I told you. I was going to tell you. I was there. I'm, I'm putting these here because they give the hole a little something to rest on, and it... And it um, makes it uh, line up with this. There's not as much gaps. So it was a simple little fix. This is it. That's the final build. Um, overall, uh, it's uh, pretty decent. I mean, for the price, you know, I think I paid two seventy dollars for it, shipped to my house from Hong Kong. So it's not so bad. I think the only mods that I'm going to do now, but I'm kind of bored with this and I want to get onto the Falcons, um, is I'm probably just going to add a row of dark gray plates in there just to fill that up a little bit. Um, I may. It's you, you don't have to go very far before you don't even notice it. Um, there's some gaps in there, too. There's that infamous hole that, for whatever reason, Leppin decided to leave in there. So I'm going to work on that. You can kind of see that I'm already building something up there. And I just threw this together just to kind of experiment a little bit. Um, I think I'm going to, when I build that, I'll post that as a little, uh, as a, a side to the, the end of this build. Um, it shouldn't be too terribly hard. It's just a matter of having the pieces. Um, I'm also going to add a row of light gray 1x8s all the way down there just to fill that gap up a little bit. For the most of the hole, it's underneath that anyway. Um, and I might take out those braces a little bit that I showed you earlier. These guys right here. You know, that, that's underneath there. Um, I think earlier I showed you them at two studs in. There are actually three studs between the frame and where that edge is. So you can make that adjustment if you want. Um, so that should be pretty much it. Um, and it lays pretty good. You know, it's not flopping. The wings aren't flopping out or anything like that. Um, that's not there. So it is what it is. And finally... The only thing I'm going to do, I don't, but it might be a while because I just don't want to deal with it. These engines are not the most stable. Um, the, these parts right here fall off, and it's a lot to do with the core makeup where they put those little wheels in, and there's really nothing holding it. Basically, I think the last stud connection is way, way back in there. So these are just flopping around on holding on nothing. Um, the, there is, if you have an Enterprise from... Uh, um, oh, what is it, Mega Blocks? They have a piece that would actually connect that two to that one. Um, I was thinking about seeing if I have any extra of those from my Enterprise. Um, so that's about it. Overall, the build's pretty decent. So um, it is Leppin. It's definitely not Lego quality. 
Um, I've pointed out the issues. I don't know what else to show you here. Um, oh, I do. Step 13, which is those guys right there. Those guys are definitely not Lego quality. They they kind of fall apart a little bit, but you do assemble everything. Whereas Lego, it's got the, it's usually the leg, the torsos, the head. Theirs is you're putting the hands into the arms, into the body, the two leg parts together. So I thought that was kind of interesting. Um, and I don't know, the Palp Palpatine doesn't seem as scary as I thought he should have been, but whatever. Okay, um, hope these were of help to you. Um, let me know, I guess, in the comment section um, if you feel like you got to flame them. I know they're not the best quality. Go ahead, but at least be constructive in your flaming if you're going to do that. Um, and finally, one little note is I'm good. I have both the Lepin and a Lego Falcon. I'm going to build them simultaneously. Um, I don't know if there's any interest in seeing commentary on those as they're being built the differences. All right, take care. Thanks for watching. Bye. So I figured out that little center gap thing to fill in. These are the parts you're going to need. I just want to give you an overview. The first little section that I was going to do, basically a 2x12, I believe. Yep, 2x12, 2x10, 1x2, 1x2, 2x2, 1x2, 2x4 with that angle left and right and then on the bottom a 4 by 12 that's the first section so the next little sections you're going to build are this and this is for the left and right side you're going to need two of each you're going to need a 2 by 12 the gray doesn't matter too much you're not going to see it but if a 2 by 2 a 2 by 12 plate a 2 by 4 a 2 by 8 plate and then these do matter you're going to need a 4 by 6 um, of these just because those are the only parts that are really going to show. And then you're just basically going to attach it like that and like this. All right. All right. So I'll do the next bit. I'll show you in a second. Okay. So this is the next part. You're just going to add these. If you, you can put whatever you want. I just use these because they fill up the gaps a little bit better. Put the one by eight plate with a rail, one by eight plate with a rail, a left and right uh, two by three angle, and then you can whatever decorative piece you want to put in there. Those are just what I had left over, so that's what I used. Okay, the last bit coming up. Okay, so that's the entire assembly right there. Basically, I added the one the one by two the uh, grate, the one by two dark cheese wedge, and this thing. I had these extra parts, that's why I used them. Be creative, do what you want. Um, I just didn't, for some reason, my, all my parts, I could not believe this. I do not have two, I do not have four by six gray plates. So that's why I came up with this a little bit. So there you go. Once you're done with it, this puppy, as I said, since I lost that part, will just sit right in there, filling up that gap pretty nicely, in my opinion. I, I went with the dark thing, just kind of band that a little bit. I thought it looked kind of cool. Do what you like. Um, the only other thing, too, is I added um, to the original... Um, are these one by six tiles and this little three by two uh, angle plate, which is the same as this right here. I had the extras. I went with them. It fills up the gap pretty nice. I'm, I'm actually pretty happy with it. It looks very similar to the one on the picture of the book, um, but be creative. Do what you like with it, but that's what I did. Now there's no gap, and it also allows you to get into it because you want to be able to get out of this. I mean, as I said, I'm going to put that in there just to hold that in a little bit. Don't forget that the conning tower pops out, and that allows you to carry it. So that's it. So thank you very much for putting up with all my these videos and what have you. Um, hope they helped. Hope they were beneficial in some way. And I know I'm just wrapping this up. I'm trying to get a nice shot, but there you go. All right. Be well.